Yeah, and, and the medicating of, of children to me is, hey, and I'm, I'm, I'm no doctor, but that seems just completely insane. You know, you know, especially, I, I think that there's a huge problem with the diagnosis, particularly of young boys, where the normal behavior of boys now, for whatever reason, is, is demonized. You know, every boy who has the normal amount of energy and enjoys the normal things that, you know, a younger adolescent boy just does. It's been normal for a time in memoriam. This is the way they are. They're physical. They're high energy. They're more prone to a little bit of conflict. They're tactile. That's now ADHD 100% of the time. You know, boys are supposed to be, you know, lined up and contained, which to me, it's, it's an absolute travesty. It's, it's, it, you know, if I, if I had been born, you know, 10 years later than I was, I would have been, I very likely would have been medicated when, when really all I needed to be was outside. You know, it's just, it's, it's so wild. It's so wild. Oh yeah. They say about a third of, um, 40% of high, um, 18 year olds are diagnosed with mental disorder. And I'm pretty sure about a third of high school students are on ADHD medications. So that is the other huge issue in this day and age is normal rite of passage, such as adolescent is pathologize and kids are medicated not just with one medication but multiple medications and yes some challenges in life and hardships that we go through it is a normal response to have to abnormal events or challenging events and those could be opportunities for learning and growth and can be helped with many different ways and yes sometimes medication is appropriate but it should be done very discerningly and cautiously but that is a huge issue that's in our world today is that there is lots of things that could be helped in many ways that are normal human response that are pathologized and yes the hardest one is to watch kids because why are our kids being diagnosed and labeled and medicated instead of being supported to learn and to go through this beautiful time in their lives and to learn about themselves and to grow from that experience. But what's the model that we have for adults as well? Because so many adults are also on antidepressants and psychiatric medications. It's an absolute, it's become a norm. So you go to your mom or your dad or people around you and they're saying, oh, this is fine. You know, you can take medication and and then you go to mental health professionals again, and they're and physicians and psychiatrists and pediatricians, and they're not taking adequate time to really explore these issues and then offer those medications. And it's one thing if they offer those medications temp as a temporary measure, but then to leave people on it for years. And even I have seen kids who have been medicated from the time they're four, five, six, 10 years up until they're 19, 20, and then they will be on it. When I worked in the adult system, there were kids, there were people that I worked with that have been on psychiatric medications since they were 18. And now they're on 12 different medications and they are struggling. They're not feeling any better and they don't have the solutions that they need in their life to move forward and to experience good mental health. Yeah. And, and I don't know, we've also been taken over by a kind of idealism where like, especially when you're a kid, you know, you know, a young kid that goes into adolescence and you experience your teenage years, it sucks. It's hard. It's hard. Like it is something that just like on a daily basis, I, I go on a rant about this because it just confuses me. It's like, when did we get encased in this strange idealism where life isn't hard 
It's like that you don't experience hardship. It's like grief and loss and tragedy comes for us all. That is part of being human, built in, inescapable. It will happen. You will experience this. It's like, and the, the, either the pretending as if that isn't true or the pathologizing of those experiences robs people of the opportunity that's inside of them. You know, it's all well and good, you know, when someone's, you know, 25 years or older with a fully developed brain and you're having a conversation with them and you're like, man, there's no resiliency in this person. You know, they're yeah. paper, they're paper thin. And that's not a judgment. It's an observation of like, man, like you got to be able to pull, you know, push through and grit your teeth every once in a while, you know, and bear down. Cause like, if you think this is hard, you know, like your parents haven't even died yet. It's like, do you think that's going to be easy? It's like, and then you, you go back in their history and every developmental stage where there was an opportunity to build resiliency is taken from them by medication, by pathologizing them, because it's yeah. mean to tell them that they're actually strong and resilient and capable and intelligent and that they can actually get through things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, many of the kids are coddled by parents, coddled by society, the school system, the mental health system. They're treated like porcelain dolls, medicated, diagnosed, and not given the opportunity to develop, like you said, a little bit of a thick skin. It's okay to struggle. We're wired for struggle, and that allows us to build our strength. And I'm not saying that, you know, that, like I said, medications can cannot be helpful in some situations, but in the way they're prescribed and used or actually misused today is that it does take the opportunity for people to find out, to build their strength and to build their resiliency and their coping skills. And that's what we're dealing with with kids today. They have zero coping skills. They don't have a very good sense of themselves. Actually, the youngest generations, the first like, you know, 20, 25 years now, they are thoroughly confused just about on everything. Thoroughly not happy. Uh, suicide is the second leading cause of death for ages 14 to 24. Like, why is that? Why do we have a generation of kids that are, there's a fully blown public health issue and crisis and mental health and kids and their parents are in absolute peril. So why do we have this at this point? Yeah, it's so, it's, it's so strange to have such a prevalence of hopelessness in young people. Hopelessness and worthlessness and feeling like life is not worth living. And I, I'm a victim and I don't have any capacity or strength to get through things and to make change and transform. It's just this sort of despondency that is very prevalent in kids today. And the, the solution when they go to a therapist or a psychologist or a psychiatrist is, or their family physician is, oh, here's some medication. And by the way, you know, that you might have some GI issues for the next few couple of weeks, but then you'll be fine and then all is well. Are you serious? No, that is not informed consent. And you cannot do a proper informed consent in seven minutes or even in the 45 minutes that a psychiatrist or a pediatrician sees a patient. They might spend five minutes talking about the risks and they don't cover all of it. So the parents don't know what their the risks that they're taking and or even an adult, they really don't know the full extent of what's happening. So 